Well, grace and peace to you, church, in the fullest measure. Pastor Cody again here wanted to share a devotional thought from Acts chapter 3. This is actually a verse that I'll be sharing this Sunday. Um, but I have some additional material that I'd like to share in light of it that won't make it into the, the sermon. And so I thought it, this would be an appropriate place to, to share it with you. It comes from, again, Acts chapter 3, and it's out of verse 26. And it deals with this word that we as Christians would call repentance. And I want to share the, the blessing of this verse, the, the encouragement of this verse. And I want to share a couple of reasons why I think as Christians and in, as broader as our culture have a hard time understanding the, the blessing that repentance really is. The word repentance doesn't actually show up in this text, but it is essentially what it is about. The, in the Greek, the word repentance means uh, to change your mind, uh, metanoia, to literally change the way that you think about something. And so this is what God is calling people to in this text. In Acts chapter 3, this man who was born um, crippled, was healed, and Peter and John are there. They healed him. He's praising the Lord. He's walking and leaping, and everyone's taking notice. So Peter, as he always does, takes his time to preach the gospel in response to this. And in Acts chapter 3, verse 26, he finishes what was his first sermon by saying, For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you. And our ears perk up. We love the thought of this, that God was sending his son Jesus to bless us. Well, how does he bless us by sending his son Jesus? Primarily, he says, it's by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. Well, this took a hard turn to the left. Peter is saying that God sent Jesus to bless you, and, and we get excited. And then he says, by turning you from your wicked ways, by granting you repentance, a change of heart and mind. And so this initial work of repentance that God grants to his people by grace is to show them that they need a Savior. He confronts them with their sin, and by his supernatural Spirit of God, he, he places in us a desire to turn or to repent. And that's a blessing. If you've known Christ for any amount of time, you know that your life in Christ is much more blessed than your life was before you knew Christ. And that's a blessing. And not only that initial work of salvation, but there's this ongoing work of salvation where God in Christ is continually blessing you by changing your mind and granting you repentance day in and day out through the transformation and renewal of your mind as you become more and more convinced by the Word of God and the Spirit of God that what God says is right and true really is right and true. Therefore, your quality of life is increased as you just understand God's will for your life and come into fuller and fuller agreement with that will of God. But I think the reason for us that the word repentance seems um, cringeworthy and for our culture might even sound like a, a curse word to them is because we have a culture around us that believes um, predominantly in moralistic, therapeutic deism. Many people around us will say, well, sure, I believe in God, and I even talk to him sometimes. Many of those people who say that hold to a view that is essentially moralistic, therapeutic deism. Moralistic, in meaning that the, the idea is that God wants me to be a good person, and uh, even I'll try to follow the principles that I see in the Bible, as well as other worldviews like Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, whatever it would be. I'm going to be a good person. So moralistic, I need to be good. And then therapeutic, meaning I need to feel good. So God wants me to be happy. That's ultimately what God is after, is my happiness. And then lastly, the word deism is essentially a, a view of God, that God is somehow distant, he kind of spun the world into existence, but now he doesn't really have much involvement in life. So God is wants me to be good, he wants me to feel good, and he is distant, not really concerned with my life, especially sin. Uh, Albert Moeller, who is the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, wrote an, uh, an, a really good article, a helpful article on this. And he, in this article, he he says this, and I quote, Moralistic therapeutic deism consists of beliefs like these. One, a God exists who created and ordered the world and watches over human life on earth. That's deism. 
God wants people to be good, nice, and fair to each other, as taught in the Bible and by most world religions. That's moralism, moralistic. Three, the central goal of life is to be happy and to feel good about oneself. There's the therapeutic aspect of this worldview. Four, God does not need to be particularly involved in one's life except when God is needed to resolve a problem. Five, God, uh, good people go to heaven when they die. There's the moralism piece again. So again, we've been raised in a culture. We've heard commercials from a culture. We've heard the radio from a culture. We watch TV from a culture that predominantly has this view of God, this God in the sky who's not really concerned about our life, especially our sin, and he wants me to be a good person and feel good about my life. And so therefore, repentance to change my ways, to turn my life over to God, and to view life differently than I previously have, um, seems more like bad news than good news. But the miracle is that we too have all viewed God in this way. We've all at one point said, God doesn't really care about my life, but at some point, God's grace was involved in our lives and he by his spirit and by his word especially the gospel showed us that we had sin in our life that he was not pleased with and so he blessed us by sending Jesus to us personally and corporately but us personally by turning us and granting us repentance so may we rejoice in that today may we rejoice that we have a God who loves us enough to transform us by granting us repentance both initially and ongoing, that ongoing work of transformation in our lives. I want to say if you've stumbled upon this video somehow, maybe it was shared on social media, or or maybe you just happen to be on our YouTube channel and watching this, and you haven't yet turned from your sin, but you're sensing the Spirit tugging your heart as you're watching this, and you realize, you know what? The God of the Bible, I, I think, is true. All you have to do is turn your life to the Lord, to repent of your sin, simply changing your mind about your life's direction. If you would confess your sin to God and believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he really is the Messiah, he is both truly God and truly man, that he died on the cross for your sins, rose again, and now is the conquering king who is soon to return. If you will confess your faith in that Christ, he will grant you that change of heart and you will turn from your sin and he will make you born again. So God bless you, church. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day as you consider the repentance that God has granted you initially and ongoing as a follower of Christ. God bless.